Hi everyone, it's Laura and I hope you're all doing really well. Today I wanted to give you some recommendations for some books that you can completely lose yourself in. I think normally I enjoy reading a lot of contemporary literary fiction, but with things as they are at the moment, I find it quite bizarre reading about normal everyday life. So I've been really craving reading like historical fiction or classics or mythical books, like something that really takes me out of the current situation. So if you are feeling in the mood for those kind of books as well, I've got a great long list here of books and authors that I highly recommend for you. So let's start with some books that I think have a lot of plot and really grab you straight away. I think sometimes that's what that's what you need if you want to escape from the world. The first of these is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This is about a party of guests at an English country house and at the end of this party Evelyn Hardcastle, the heiress, is murdered and our narrator is reliving this same day every day in the body of a different guest until he can solve the murder of Evelyn Hardcastle. And if he doesn't solve her murder, he'll be stuck in this hellscape forever. There's also other people playing this game at the same time. So you end up on this incredible ride of reliving the day again and again. It's incredibly detailed, very cleverly worked through. Um, and it also has this overhanging sense of threat and dread because not only is he trying to solve the murder of Evelyn, he's also in danger of being hurt himself by these other characters and he doesn't know who they are and something about an English country house is also quite quite spooky when there's murder happening. Kindred by Octavia E. Butler is also a little bit odd, a bit of a strange premise, but full of plot, full of action, and also full of danger as well. This is about Dana, who is a black woman living in the 70s in the US, and then suddenly she finds herself traveling back in time to slave era Maryland, and she works out that she's going back in time in order to save the life of this young white boy called Rufus, who is one of her ancestors. So she has to keep him alive and look after him in order to protect herself, to make sure that she goes on to be born. So it's a bit of a crazy premise, but it's also terrifying because Dana um, is always at risk when she's back in Maryland. But what makes it even more risky is that she hasn't grown up in this landscape. She doesn't really know the rules of the time. And so she doesn't really know how to navigate the world and to keep herself safe. And it's terrifying and the amount of violence, but not even just the violence, the, the constant threat of violence is very, very scary. Um, but amazing. Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie is about the Biafran War in Nigeria in the 60s and this is about a very well-off Nigerian family um, and how the war takes its toll on them. It's also about an, an English journalist who goes over there and um, starts a relationship with one of these two sisters and it is just beautifully written. The characters are wonderful. I read this a long time ago but it has really stayed with me. I've got many images from this book still in my head. And another Nigerian book, which I will never stop talking about until everyone I know has read it, is Stay With Me by Ayobami Adebayo. I loved this book. This is about a Nigerian couple who are struggling to have a baby. And the book opens with the husband's family convincing him that it's time for him to take a second wife, seeing as his first wife is not giving him any children. And so far, so reasonably ordinary, you kind of think this is going to be a bit of a kitchen sink drama, but it goes off in so many different directions and that makes it sound like it's some kind of mystery novel and then it, which it isn't but it just doesn't take you on the journey you think you're going to go down there are so many different family secrets and it's a really interesting look at the concept of motherhood and oral histories because the first wife Yejidi has lost her own mother and now she is equally struggling to bring forth her own child and it's really about families there's lots of aspects of fairy tales in there and the concept of motherhood and girlhood growing into womanhood. It's just so fantastically written and I loved it. <laughs> Something I've been enjoying a lot recently is historical fiction, so I have loads of recommendations for those. The first of these is Sarah Waters, in general. Fingersmith is my favourite book of hers. Fingersmith is set in the Victorian period and it's about a young thief called Sue who disguises herself as a maid as part of an elaborate plot to bring down the lady of the house um, in this country house. And it's one of my, it is, I think my favourite Sarah Waters. I think the twists and turns in it, I completely didn't expect. And so I really, really loved the journey. My other favourite of hers is The Night Watch, which is set during, mostly is during and after the Second World War in London, but it starts way past the war and we go backwards in time. And I think we follow maybe three or four sets of couples and different relationships 
and you're going backwards to see where they started from so then you can really understand how they've ended where they are um, post the war and I, that is absolutely brilliantly structured and I really love that. The Essex Serpent is also set in the Victorian period and this is about a woman whose husband dies so she leaves London and moves out to Essex to Colchester where she hears about this myth of the return of the mythical Essex Serpent and it's really about that town slowly giving way to hysteria. It handles some interesting topics on nature and science versus religion and this woman kind of striking out alone in a in a more patriarchal society um, but the characters really grew on me like and as I went through the book I liked it more and more and I almost felt like I'd been tricked at the end like I didn't realize how much I cared about these characters um, until the very end because right at the beginning I didn't really like them very much so I thought that was quite clever similar to this book is The Crimson Petal and the White by Michelle Faber. I say similar, they're not similar plots, um, but it felt like a very similar reading experience. This is a story of Sugar, who is a prostitute in Victorian London, and one of her clients who decides he wants exclusive as access to her um, and starts paying her madam so that only he can see her, their relationship grows and grows, he eventually gets her a house to, to install her in, and it's, a, it's about just that really, it's one of those things that's just about that, but it, it's about power as well of men over women and um, emancipation from that from that power struggle. Um, it, we also get a lot of um, the wife and the, the wider aspects of prostitution within London and um, the different girls who are in that situation. And it's one of those really, it's one of those interesting pieces of historical fiction where you feel like you really understand the characters and you recognise them, but they don't feel anachronistic, they don't feel too modern, but they feel modern enough that you really identify with them. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr is another Second World War book and we're following two characters, a young girl living in France who's blind and a young boy living in Germany and we flip between them quite regularly and I think this is a fantastic book to read at this time because each the girl and the boys each of their stories is reasonably slow and each of their chapters unfolds really beautifully but we're jumping between the characters so often that you don't feel too bogged down you feel like the plot is moving on quite quickly so this is really the perfect thing if you want to get into some character study um, and get into a bit of a slower book that's gonna gonna grow but you're also feeling a bit skittish and you're not really sure if you've got the patience for like war and peace for example um i think this is an excellent one it's so beautiful the way their stories are intertwined and it's also a very honest and mournful look really at the concept of war and the fact that it is crap for everybody, for everyone involved. It doesn't matter what side you're on, everybody just experiences pain and loss and violence and that it, it's just really not worth it. It's really looking at the suffering caused by war but then also the beauty and joy of life. And finally for the historical fiction section is Homegoing by Yar Jassy. Similar to All the Light We Cannot See, this book is quite an episodic but even more so. This is about two sisters um, living in Ghana or the, the Gold Coast during the slave era. One of them gets sold into slavery and the other one doesn't. And with each chapter, we jump a generation and see their descendants. So you'll have a chapter from one sister, a chapter from the other one, then the chapter from sister one's son and a chapter from sister two's daughter. And you're jumping, jumping, jumping and seeing the difference in their family trajectories from the branch of the family that goes to the US um, under slavery and the branch that stays in Ghana and it, it's really beautiful to see this unfold. It does jump a lot, and I think that's one criticism that I've seen of it, that you don't get to spend enough time with each of the characters. But, I but for me, I loved that aspect of it, and I think especially if you want something which just, just draws you in, this is a really good book to read for that reason. If I'm in a reading slump, then I do really like short books because I feel like they really get me out of it and get me into the habit of reading a lot again. But if I just want to completely escape and immerse myself in something, I love a long book, especially something that spans generations or years. So you feel like these characters are real people to you. So I've got a few recommendations here. The first of these is a classic and that's Anna Karenina. The main story arc of this book is about Anna, who is a married woman who then falls in love with the much younger dashing Count Vronsky and decides to leave her husband for him um, which creates a huge disturbance within this high society of this Russian community um, but it's not really just about the fallout of that decision it's also about many other characters in different families it's 
it with it being Tolstoy it's very philosophical it it talks about happiness and the meaning of life and family and love and just finding your purpose and it is a long book you spend a lot of time with seemingly peripheral characters really understanding their history and their motivations but that's the kind of writing that I love in these very long books I really enjoy fully understanding a character. I like seeing them develop over years. I like understanding about their mother and father and their brother and sister and their cousins and this person they met on the street once. I wanna understand this entire society and you really get that from this book. I have not read War and Peace, but I would actually put that on this list as well based off of the TV series with Lily James because when I watched that, I really recognized so many of so many aspects of Tolstoy's writing that I love about Anna Karenina within this series. Another very long classic book that I absolutely love is Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. Um, this is about Becky Sharp lying and cheating her way to the top of um, the top of London society. It's set during the Napoleonic Wars and it's again just one of those books where I, you fall in love with the characters. They are all extremely flawed and I think Net Thackeray's narrative really positions that in quite a humorous way. He's quite wry and sarcastic about these characters. Um, but again, after you've been with them for so many years of their lives, you just feel like you know them and that you love them so much. Well, I do at least. I know long books can be a little bit daunting, especially if they are classic pieces of literature. So I'll recommend some longer contemporary books as well. The first of these is The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood. I think Margaret Atwood is a fantastic writer. I really love getting into her stories, no matter what they're about. And a lot of her books are very eclectic, very different from each other, but I think she really draws you in and I, I just love the way she writes. This is about two sisters, one of them died in a car crash and the uh, remaining sister is looking back and remembering their youth during the 40s I think it is and um, her sister is a very, very well-known author, the writer of this amazing book, The Blind Assassin, and you also get snippets of The Blind Assassin as well, which is this amazing sort of sci-fi fantasy book, and um, I really enjoyed jumping between all of these different worlds, and I think it's a fantastic story. And lastly, for the long books, I would really recommend Donna Tartt as somebody who you can really get your teeth into her books. My favourite one of hers is The Secret History, which is about a group of students at an elite US university, um, who are part of an ancient Greek class and um, they all conspire to kill one of their members. You know this right at the beginning of the book that they that they kill um, one of their friends, Bunny, and then it's looking back at why they took that decision, how they killed him, like what led up to those events. And it's about a narrator who is not of the same upper social class as the rest of the students in the group. Like in entering into that world, it's very great Gatsby-esque. They're very careless people who don't really think about how their actions affect others. Similarly, I read The Goldfinch um, earlier this year, which is about a young boy who semi-accidentally steals the goldfinch, a piece of artwork from the Met Museum, and then has to hide it. And it's about his whole life just carrying around this piece of artwork um, without anybody knowing about it. And again, it's one of those books which is just so ab about everything and to the point where, at the end of the book, you almost think, what was that about? Um, it is about this boy stealing a piece of art, the same way as A Secret History is about this group of stu students killing one of their friends. But it, it's almost about everything in between, and you just go on this whole journey with these characters. Um, so I think if you're in the mood to get really stuck into something, um, Donna Tartt's books are excellent candidates. And finally, I've got some recommendations for if you just want to get out of this world completely. Um, and I don't read a great deal of fantasy, but what I have read, I can recommend to you. And somebody that I've been reading a lot of and enjoying a lot of recently is Juliette Marillia. Um, she writes so many books, she has written many books, and a lot of them are series as well, which I think is great. A lot of her stories are set in a medieval fantasy version of Ireland. Most of them focus on young girls who have to defeat sorcerers or break curses or just help, help people, basically. Um, and I really love it. I think they're so nicely written while also not being too fluffy. Like the violence feels quite realistic. There's lots of violence against women in these books or the ramifications of, of those kind of acts. And I really like that. Not like I love violence against women, but I love that 
it's very realistic and it helps the series to feel quite grounded, I think, despite all the fairies. <laughs> the Treatment's Pool is the first in the Blackthorn and Grimm series, which I've read all of and I really enjoy because um, they're almost like mystery novels, like Blackthorn and Grimm turning up in different towns and having to solve this mystery and I really like that. Um, I've also started reading the Seven Waters series with Daughter of the Forest and I think there's six of those books and from what I hear, that is a very good series. Daughter of the Forest, I absolutely really, really loved. Um, so I think that if there's ever a time to get into Juliet Marilia, it's probably now. And finally, there are a lot of Greek myth retellings around at the moment. Don't know if you've noticed, the last few years it seems to have absolutely boomed as a genre. I haven't read that many, but the ones that I have read, I've really enjoyed. So I would highly recommend Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which is the story of Achilles and from Patroclus's perspective. Um, in this book, they have a relationship, which is just so beautiful. And it's a story, a retelling of the Iliad, essentially. I also really enjoyed Circe, which came out a couple of years ago, um, and is the, is the story of a sub-character, Circe the Witch, from the Odyssey, but it just tells her story from beginning to end. Um, and I, what I liked about this book particularly is that all the Greek myths and legends are so intertwined and so many characters, gods and nymphs and what have you, appear in several different stories. Um, and I like that we are just following one character and seeing all of the different gods and the different myths and the different um, legends that, that Circe herself just appears in. And another retelling of the Iliad, if you'd like, a different perspective to the Song of Achilles is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. And I, I really enjoyed this book. It's mostly told from the perspective of the women who are just collateral damage essentially in, in these kind of wars. They're traded as spoils after all their husbands and fathers and sons have been killed. They're then taken by the victors to be enslaved or to be raped. And um, it's it's a tale of the Iliad from their perspective. You do get a little bit more of Achilles in this book as well. And I don't think it's, a, it's not like a perfect book, but I really enjoyed the reading experience of it. Something that I think is quite interesting um, <laughs> at the moment is that when you are under quite a lot of stress or there's a lot of uncertainty in your life, I feel like I'm actually really enjoying reading quite dreadful things, like books about war. Um, I know a lot of other people have said to me they're really enjoying thrillers and it's quite interesting that a lot of these books I'm recommending to you do have really good plots to follow, but a lot, you know, quite a few of them also have a lot of threat and fear and violence and those kind of things and I think it's quite interesting um, why we turn to those kind of stories when there is actual danger in our lives or sadness in our lives and I think it's it's like a safe place for you to go through those feelings of fear and to go through that adrenaline and use up your energy but it's not something that's going to physically hurt you. So a little bit of philosophy there for you at the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed these recommendations. I would love to hear from you if you pick any of them up. If any, if there are any there that you haven't read before that you fancy reading, I really hope this was helpful. Um, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.